gives this woman to marry this man? That's why we seek God's blessing, 
He is the invisible third party that enters into this union today and will give it the strength to keep it from being broken easily. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, A threefold cord is not easily broken. That's why we're calling this union a marriage covenant. God, His promises, His power, yes, even all that He is comes today into this union that He might make it all He wants it to be. He's the author of marriage. The one who authored marriage is the one who knows how it should work and what it takes for marriage to be a haven of rest in a troubled world. That's a word for you guys that I really believe the Lord wants you to hear. He wants this relationship to be a union that brings the peace of God and it's a haven of rest and peace in a troubled world. The home you're established. This evening, we're witnessing this couple enter into the holy covenant of marriage together with each other and with God.
Kyla, would you now repeat this to John? I, Kyla, take you, John, to be my husband, to live together with you in God's holy covenant of marriage. I promise to be subject to you as unto the Lord. I commit to love you to follow you, to serve you, and to honor you in sickness and health, in wealth and want, keeping myself only unto you, forsaking all others for as long as we both shall live.
spoke of God being the author of marriage. And the Word of God, the Bible tells us some of God's blueprints for a marriage that we want. I'm going to share a few of those scriptures. The Word of God tells us what love is like and what love does. Love is patient, love is kind. Is not jealous, does not brag. Is not arrogant, does not act unbecoming. It does not seek its own, it is not promoted. It does not take into account the wrong suffering. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. First Corinthians chapter 13. The New Testament also shares that true happiness comes from putting each other first rather than thinking of myself first. Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as unto the Lord. And husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than yourself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also look out for the interests of the other. Have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ. Philippians chapter 2. Having this kind of love in your hearts, you've chosen to exchange rings to it as a sign and a seal of the covenant you've entered into. And I have the ring. The ring is given as the sign of the covenant each of these have entered into today and with God. The Bible tells a story of a rainbow that was set in the sky with Noah after the flood. And God made a promise after the great flood. And the bow was a perpetual sign of a covenant he would make and did make. This ring is a perpetual sign of the covenant these two are entering into today. Made of precious metal. The ring reminds us that love is not cheap nor common. Indeed, love may cost us dearly. Made in a circle, the design tells us love must never come to an end. As you receive these rings today and begin to wear them, whether apart or together, may they be constant reminders of these promises John, would you place the ring on Kyle's finger? Would you hold it there? Would you repent it? Would you repeat it, Mr. Hurd? Kyle, uh, with this ring, with this ring, I seal my promise to you. I seal my promise to you. It is a sign of our covenant, sign of our covenant. and of our love, of our love as we join our lives together.
at this time, John and Kyla are going to assemble a Unity Cross, a beautiful sculpture on the Unity Cube. A beautiful sculpture they will display in their home to remind them of the covenant they are making today. In Genesis 1, we read that God created man in his own image. That means he created man bold, strong, to be a leader, to be a protector of his wife and family. The outer form of the unity cross represents the strength, leadership, and protection of the man. The book of Ephesians reminds the husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church, totally, completely giving himself for her. As well, in Genesis chapter 2, the Word of God tells us that the woman was taken from man. The bride's piece of the unity cross represents the beauty, the many capabilities of the woman designed with intricate, beautiful detail, and is placed inside the protection of the groom's cross, completing the sculpture and representing the two. To complete the sculpture, which represents the couple's covenant, we are placing three pegs to hold it together. These pegs represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, showing God's place in this covenant and the security and completeness that our Heavenly Father can give. You Scriptures tell us that a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Matthew 19, 5 and 6 says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. This time, those that are going to join us for prayer, would you please come? Nudge their spirits to 
you desire time to read the Bible and to pray, and may their trust in you increase. May they always be sensitive to each other's feelings, recognize fear, hurt, and together with you, Lord, replace these with knowledge, joy, understanding, laughter, lots of laughter, Lord, and peace to fill their home. We pray, Lord, here in this gathering of friends and family, that Kyla and John may love each other and serve you throughout their journey that begins here, begins now. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you humble beside the water, humble by the love that you pour upon us daily. But we come before you humble by the love that needs to share that we are all honored to bear witness to. We just thank you so much for this blessed union in your eyes. And we pray that you would guide them in their journey together through life. And most of all, that they would each grow closer to you and by doing so, grow closer to each other for us. This union, the one that is good and pure, that they never forget this moment of passion and love, Lord. We thank you so much for the blessing of friendship, the blessing of family. But we pray that you watch over this wonderful family that's beginning today and for many, many years to come. We pray this for your son's holy name.
it is my privilege to present to you Mr. and Mrs. John Hill.